Putin is betrayed by a major ally, as 12,000 Russian soldiers are literally kicked out of Belarus. At the same time, even North Korea decided to abandon Russia. And to make things even worse, America constructed 12 bunkers next to the territory of Russia. And guys, today marks the one week of anniversary of our The Russian Dude merch, so today I will give you a code with the huge discount. Just keep watching the video. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh, oh, oh. So, today, Putin met with the representatives of a lot of different, still friendly towards Russia countries in so-called Games of the Future, which he wants to use to replace the Olympic Games in Russia, playing with countries like, I guess, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Tajikistan, and so on. So, long story short, they were watching, observing uh, floorball, if I'm not mistaken, that's the name of this sport. This is kind of like hockey, but with the ball on the floor. And Putin was like, hey guys, who wants to play with me? <laughs> Nobody said anything, everyone started looking at each other. Putin then asked even Lukashenko, Alexander, you are my big friend, let's play. Even Lukashenko said, no, Vladimir, I am not going to play with you. Guess why? If you lose, you are humiliated by a 70-year-old grandpa. But if you win, well, this might be your last victory in floorball. Not that too many people have played floorball, floorball ever in their lives, but that's definitely gonna be your last one. So basically the decision to play against Putin is not something too many people want to do. What? What a betrayal. Lukashenko did not say yes to Putin. But you know what? That's not even the worst thing. Because recently Putin went through even more ambushing, backstabbing events, and we will talk about them very soon. But first of all, I want to say that 46% of you guys are still not subscribed to the Russian Dude Army. What's going on? And I mean, yeah, I know that probably you, Billy, Bjorn, Bishop, Bo, Bobby, you kind of think that it's not about you, like, why would you need to... But yes, you guys also need to subscribe. And if you still haven't done so, don't worry, just do it, and eventually I will call you by your name as well. It only takes one click, and it is very well appreciated. And by the way, if we can reach 241,000, I will do a reveal what's on the back of this iconic Russian dude hoodie, because there is something. And speaking about the merch, as promised, the winner of the most like comments, which is Russia, the second best army in Ukraine made it to the Russian Dude merch. You can already order it from the official website, the link is down below. And by the way, do you remember that I mentioned this uh, code which will give you a huge discount for the merch celebrating the week of the Russian Dude merch? Well, guys, uh, pay attention, please vi watch video carefully because the code will appear on the screen for literally split second and it will only be valid until the end of this Sunday, March 3rd, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please hurry up, the quantities will be limited and the link once again to the website is down below. And so yes, now let's briefly talk about the farewell to Alexei Navalny in Moscow and how many people attended it. Then we're gonna give you a quick update from the east and the south of Ukraine where there are 12 secret US Basis. And speaking about Navalny, he was buried in uh, Moscow this Friday, March uh, the 1st, and it was estimated that the line of people who want to say bye was to be between 1.5 to 2 kilometers, more than one mile long. Even though the Russian propaganda completely ignored this fact, they said like, yeah, maybe like 10 people came to say bye, like, we are not even interested in this guy at all anymore, like, did he even do something special? That was the attitude of the Russian propaganda which is obviously ridiculous. And then those people in the crowd, they were supporting Alexei Navalny and his thing that he is doing against the regime of Putin. They were screaming, Putin shouldn't be a ruler to just trying to be as less explicit as possible. They were just praising Russian soldiers saying that they should return home, there is nothing for them to do in Ukraine. Ukrainians are good people, the war should be stopped. And of course, as you would imagine, 
police were jamming the telephone signals, nobody was able to call, nobody was able to publish some internet stories, nothing like this. If some people were behaving way too radical to police liking, they were detaining them, and it is estimated that the total of, let me even confirm to be specific, a total of 56 people were detained across Russia in so-called protests in favor, in support of Navalny, which makes you think how much Putin is afraid of this guy and his ideas, even though this guy is already not with us, but he still makes Putin to be trembling in fear, thinking, what if somebody picks up his ideas, starts where he left, and it all starts all over again. So Putin, yes, he is afraid for his power. So yes, now as promised, let me give you a very brief update from the south and the east of Ukraine, and also top secret bases of Americans on the territory of Ukraine, and then we'll finalize everything with grand betrayal of Putin by at least two of his major allies. First of all is the video from the Crimean Peninsula from Gvardeyskaya, where once again local residents were able to hear some very loud noises and then smoke rising up. According to the local quote-unquote authorities, nothing significant happened. Then also allegedly is the video from the southern front lines where a Ukrainian land drone, which previously we saw it, which was usually just delivering supplies to Ukrainians on the front lines, apparently this drone also has another responsibility, which is to deliver explosive <laughs> supplies to the Russian trenches, and it did its job successful. So, and then, finally, another interesting thing that Ukrainians started doing, at least according to them in the southern front lines, is that they started just literally throwing spikes on the grounds, usually where Russians were mainly using their trucks and driving with their vehicles, which do have tires, simply to disrupt the logistics, simply to make these tires explode, and just slow down in general the supplies of Russians along the southern front lines. Maybe, and most likely, the same thing is happening in the East as well, but this report originally came to us, at least, from the South. Next we get closer to the Eastern front lines, but first, let's make a quick stop in Belgorod, where recently local residents also were able to hear some pretty loud noises, and according to the local authorities, also obviously nothing significant happened. But then in the morning of the next day, the defense intelligence of Ukraine released this video, showing that in fact a Russian air defense system called Panzer S-1 was destroyed as a result of a Ukrainian drone attack, which is very ironic. Once again, drone versus air defense system. Drone, air defense system. <laughs> An air defense system, which is estimated to be cost at $15 million, was not able to intercept a drone. The only thing which it was created for, it was not able to do it, so mission failed successfully. Next we have a video from the Eastern front line, specifically the very first one comes to us from Kremina, where once again representatives of Ukrainian elite brigade Azov, they are targeting Russian soldiers who just got lost in the middle of the open field and they use drones for this purpose. And then, as we also go along the Eastern front lines, is yet another video where Ukrainians are using Bradleys and in combination with drones, they find the position of Russians, destroy them, eliminate them, push them back, completely crumble the offensive attempts by Russians and completely pretty much do not even suffer any losses from the Ukrainian side. This is a work of art, what Ukrainians were able to achieve and also, according to them, the, pin the personnel, the infantry which they were able to destroy from the Russian side are continuing considered to be elite soldiers, and well, seeing them being eliminated just like literally newborns, newbies, like it's, it's pretty questionable that they were elite soldiers. As always, I highly encourage you guys to see this video for yourself, because this is a literally a textbook offensive by Ukrainians, which looks like absolutely no mistakes from their side. This is just a flawless modern warfare. And as always, the fully uncensored version will be available on my Patreon, in addition to hundreds of other uncensored photos and videos. And as always, Patreons get additional discount for the Russian Dude merch. The link to my Patreon is down below. 
But Russians, they do adapt in very strange ways. I mean, for them looks like it is working, so in the meantime they use it. Let's see for how long they can continue doing this. And specifically what I'm talking about here is that some Chinese golf carts, and I'm not even kidding, like literally golf carts, with only capable of transporting four to six people, were spotted bringing Russian infantry closer to the front lines. And the reason why it is, let's call it like this innovative approach, it is because Ukrainians, they feel it's like kind of not worth it to waste the entire drone or artillery attack on this small golf cart, which is like, what, $5,000. They better keep it and try to destroy something more valuable, like, for example, armored personal carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, or even tanks. And unfortunately, Russians continue their offensive attempts right now, at least in two places. The very first one in Bakhmut front line is that there is a heavy pressure against Chasif Yar, located right here, and then another place of interest for Russians is next to Avdivka, next to Lastochkina, Orlivka, and Severnia. At this very moment, in this specific Avdivka front line, Russians are trying to advance, but they're not yet successful at least at the moment of recording this video, and they started bringing even more of their fighter jets, as you can see from this video, six of them flying by. Which is yet another opportunity for Ukrainians to intercept them, bringing it's pretty much a world record in the number of fighter jets intercepted in the shortest period of time. And so yes, even though, like mentioned previously, Russians try to advance to the west of Avdiivka from the Lastichkin and Severnaya, it is not that much successful for them, because right here is another compilation of destroyed Russian military vehicles of various kinds, and very interesting thing that a lot of tanks which Russians used in this front line are T-62s, at least the ones which were identified, and these are pretty old machines, which kinda gives you an idea that Russians are getting very short on tank supplies, if you remember, for the last several months we were talking about Ukrainians using drones and destroying the most modern battle tanks of Russia, such as, for example, T-90Ms, well, looks like Ukrainians destroyed a lot of them, since right now Russians have to use much older machines. Then there is yet another very important settlement for Russians in this front line called Stepove, where Ukrainians were able to destroy 25 armored vehicles of various kinds in the last several days, as you can see from this picture. And just in general, in the last 24 hours alone, Ukrainians were able to destroy 13 concentrations of Russian infantry, 3 multiple launch rocket systems called Grad, 2 artillery systems, 2 command posts, and 1 ammunition depot of Russian forces. But that's not even the most intriguing part, because according to Western military intelligence, summarized by the New York Times, for the last 8 years, America constructed at least 12 top secret bunkers on the territory of Ukraine, next to the border with Russia, and they use them to spy on Russians, to collect the intelligence data, to intercept their calls, and at this very moment they and they're even reportedly capable of interfering with Russian drones. And it has even been mentioned that the head of defense intelligence of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, was one of the commanders of one of such units slash bunkers. And according to this article, the presence of such bunkers is what helped Ukrainians a lot in the beginning of the invasion to repel the majority of Russian attacks and not to be completely crumbled, not to be completely devastated by the Russian attacks. Some of these bunkers reportedly were constructed as far as 8 years ago, so pretty much even before the invasion happened, and they played a crucial role in collecting the intelligence about Russia. And also, I mean, since we already know it, since we already know about these bunkers, even though they are supposedly top secret, at this very moment the information is obviously already public, I'm pretty positive that the Russian FSB and Putin knew about such bunkers way before us. And potentially this also could have been the reason why Russia, why Putin specifically himself, decided to do this invasion. But wait, there is more. So we obviously have Ukraine against Russia. We have NATO, including mostly America, who also does not like Putin that much, to say the least. But Putin still has his allies, such as, for example, the most famous ones are Belarus and North Korea. But, guys, hold your horses. <laughs> because recently, estimatedly, 12,000 number of Russian soldiers have been literally 
kicked out or expelled from Belarus. They kind of obviously justified it that, I mean, yeah, Russians do not need to be in Belarus that much anymore because Ukrainians are not planning to invade Belarus, all this kind of nonsense, even though, I mean, why would even Ukrainian, like, why would Ukraine even invade Belarus? But this is what they said to justify the withdrawal, while in fact, most likely, Belarus people and Lukashenko himself just literally got tired of hosting those soldiers on its own territory, always creating tensions and conflicts between between each other and also making Europe to look like giving the side eye to Belarus. And Lukashenko was like, I mean, we can remain friends, there is no threat from Ukraine, so guys, please go home, I'm not gonna ask twice. <laughs> And speaking about the North Korea, it is estimated that since the beginning of this country's support to Russia, they sent them at least 2.5 million rounds of ammunition. And this is just the one which was able to be confirmed and verified. According to these satellite images, uh, long story short, North Korean ships were docking in the North Korean ports, then in Russian ports, and they were not using like identification signals or radar, so they were not technically spotted on the map. But guess what happened recently? Well, apparently, according to several reports confirmed by the most updated satellite images, even North Korea stopped sending its munitions and supplies to Russia. Some people call it as some fictitious problems in North Korean factories, not being able to produce this much weapons and satisfy the Russian demand, which to be honest is a pretty nonsense reasoning, because I mean North Korea was always producing some kind of munitions and weapons, so they do have millions in the stockpiles left, so that's, that this excuse is simply not valid. What I honestly think is that North Korea itself was like, okay, Putin, we helped you a lot, and what did we get in return? Maybe, yes, maybe they did share some secrets about nuclear industry, some internet, interna international, intercontinental, I mean, ballistic missiles. But at this point, North Koreans were like, okay, we got what we wanted, you do not possess any interest to us anymore, so I mean, well, the party is over, please pay your bill, unless, unless otherwise we're not gonna ship any more supplies to you, and this is what I personally think happened here. But as always, please guys, you let us know down below in the comments what do you think. If you also missed my previous video about intercepted Russian communications, which revealed devastating situation in the East, the video will appear to the left of me. Also, once again, please go ahead and check the merge. If you did miss this code which appeared on the screen for a split second, just rewatch several last minutes, you'll find it. And also, please once again follow me on Instagram, follow, subscribe to my Patreon for additional footage. Thank you guys so much for your support and see you on Tuesday.